well, Dana, how did the uh, how did the bye week go? Was there focus on certain things that you wanted to sort of look at from the from the first five, and did you feel like you accomplished it? Well, um, you know, I, I, you, with these Thursday games, you you know, I appreciate bye weeks with Thursday games. Um, you know, it's not a it's not it's not a true bye week just because you're you're short a couple of days. Um, you know, for so many times I sat here and complained about having short weeks. You know, I mean, that was our life for four years uh, in the American. Um, I appreciate how the Big 12 does that. If you're playing a Thursday game, then you're you're going to you're going to get some relief, you know. And so, <clears throat> you know, 10 days uh, play and then you got, you know, another, you know, uh, nine days or whatever it is until you play the next one. So, you know, it gives you a little bit more time to prepare for. Uh, the, the, uh, your opponent, uh, you still got to mix in some recruiting, which we were out on the road on Thursday and, and Friday of last week. Um, you know, and then I think we're going to do a couple of things on Saturday of this week um, with some junior colleges and stuff. Um, so other than that, it's just it's basically just continued improvement, right? And so we practiced hard on on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. Um, you know did recruiting Thursday, Friday, and then we're, we're on a game week starting this past Saturday, you know, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I was happy with the work that we've got, um, you know, we, we, uh, a perfect world, I would have rather played last Saturday, you know, just to keep playing. We're not beat up, you know, we're not, we don't need a, we don't need a bye week last week, you know, when we got one after Memphis, I'm like, thank goodness, I mean, we need this thing bad. You know, I didn't feel that after Texas Tech. I felt like we left stuff out there, obviously. But I didn't feel like we needed uh, to, to, you know, we didn't need the rest, so to speak. Uh, so I was ha happy with the preparation. Um, we just got to keep getting better, man. I mean, we've got, you know, got, got, a, got a lot to improve on. So you say there's a lot to improve on. What has been the focus like last Tuesday, Wednesday, and then coming back Saturday? Let's start with uh, good old-fashioned blocking and tackling. I mean, our tackling was horrendous. Uh, I think it was over 20-some missed tackles. Um, it's bad as it's been since I've been here. So, yeah, that, that was a focus. Uh, blocking, um, you know, we got we to gotta do a better job of finishing blocks offensively. Don't think that was the root of our problem. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to get back to what the good old basics of football are, you know. So, uh, you know, this team that we're playing, West Virginia, is, they're, they're really, really good at blocking and tackling. <clears throat> I mean, turn the video on, you can see it. They just don't miss a whole lot of tackles. And, you know, offensively, it's all about, you know, the running game and blocking people up front and stuff like that. So it's a huge challenge for us for where we're at. And, um, our guys understand that, and I, I think we're going to step up and, and, and block and tackle better on Thursday. Dana, the differences between first half and second half, is it as simple as worn down, or is it the kind of contributing factors with, you know, the missed tackles and everything that sort of – Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, second half wasn't a problem in three of our non-conference games. Um, the two Big 12 games, second half was a huge problem. I acknowledge that. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that the two we got wore out in the second half are against, you know, power five pretty good teams, you know. So um, that's a focus. Four quarters is going to be a focus. I mean, West Virginia is going to shorten the game. They're going to try to control the clock. They're one of the, you know, nation's leaders in time of possession. Uh, try to limit possessions. It's how they play. You know, they're, they're, they're really good on defense. And, you know, most of their games have been low-scoring games that in short, shorter football games. So um, we got to play four quarters. You know, uh, if you if you look at Tech, you know, we came out in the second half. I mean, clearly, I was happy with where offense was in the first half. Come out in the second half and in the third quarter, you know, two possessions, we we move the ball, okay, and it gets down, and we, you know, we we got to hit that third and seven. You know, we didn't, so we punt. It's part of the game. We pin him inside the five-yard line. The guy bobbles it. Uh, Trey McCutcheon makes a freshman mistake and smokes him, gets the ball out there to the 25-yard line. Three plays later, they score. 
Offense gets the ball back down 14 points. We move the ball. We sustain a drive. Uh, we miss a shot into the end zone, and then third and two, fourth and one, the same problems show up. On, on, on critical downs and short yardage situations, we got to get that first down. You know, uh, that was pretty much the third quarter, and then I think we just ran out of ran out of gas. Started getting holding calls. Started getting us behind the chains. I think we had three three holding calls in the fourth quarter. You know, which put us behind the chains, and that's just not winning football. So, um, four quarters has been addressed. Um, you know, when you play these Big 12 football teams, you're going to have to play four quarters, and you're going to have to come out and you have to play better in the second half. Coach, I apologize for looking back. Just wanted to follow up with you on uh, the the diminished touches for Parker in the backfield in the second half of that game. Was that more of like a workload or the situation of the way the game was and all that or – Anything like that? Or just trying to mix it up a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, we're going to play more than Parker. I mean, Parker's a true freshman, you know, and so we have a, a plan going into it as far as what that rep count's going to look like. <clears throat> uh, I felt like Stacy Sneed should have played more. Um, you know, but they're all going to get their opportunities. They're all going to get their touches and, you know, kind of how that – what it looks like and, and, you know, how they're feeling on the sidelines and what that look in their eye looks like is going to be the ones that ends up playing more in the second half. That said, I think I mean, we're happy with Parker. I mean, Parker's playing well, so he is our starting running back. And um, but they're they're all going to play that position. They all got to play. Dana, before I specifically ask about their personnel, it's kind of a different week for you, just given your your history at West Virginia. I mean, you knew this one was coming. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's a question I'm going to get all week. Obviously, this is the first ever meeting between West Virginia and Houston. First, first one ever, you know. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I've, I've been in a situation a lot where you leave a place and you play them and all that. And so the best way I've figured out how to approach it is is turn the phone off and, and, and go to work, you know. Um, you know, this is for the fans. The fans get into that. The fans, you know, appreciate that. And, I mean, you know, I enjoyed my time at West Virginia, there's no question. And, uh a lot of really, really, really good people. And I know a lot of them are coming, you know, so it should make it for an exciting game, you know. But at the end of the day, it's about me doing my job and getting our team ready to play. Did you ask Brett not to send you to Morgantown for the first time? Yeah, it, it, I, I didn't. Uh, I'm shocked that that didn't happen. I mean, my prediction was week three, year one, that was going to happen. Um, so, I mean, we'll see them next year up there, you know. But, uh, you know, they're going to travel. they got a great fan base. Mountaineer Nation is, is, is alive and well. They're playing well. Um, they got s tremendous support. Um, they coming. And it should make for an exciting night. And then personnel, Donaldson out of the backfield. And then looked like Green. I'm not sure if he played the last game, but he's, he's been yeah. the starter there. Yeah, he did. He's their starting quarterback. Um, you know, he was hurt two games ago, and they play, uh, played the freshman. Uh, they won't change what they do regardless of who's playing, but this is Garrett Green's team. And uh, he, he's, he's going to he's, – he'll be their quarterback. He played well against TCU. You know, they played well against TCU in all phases. Um, you know, the two teams that have beat us, they, they, they beat those guys, you know, and they played well in both those games. You know, what they do – Offensively, with controlling the ball, trying to get the run game going. Obviously, Don, uh, Donaldson's a, a tremendous player, and he's he's big, you know, um, you know. But but taking care of the football, um, you know, they're big up front. They got a lot of experience up front. So it's I mean I, we got to stop the run. I mean we didn't do that against Texas Tech. I mean we we've been pretty good about stopping the run around here over the course of the last four years, and we got we got our work cut out for us to do that. It, you know, it starts with with knocking people back up front and getting pushed up front and, and, and being tacklers, you know, and then, you know, they're good in special teams. They're good. Uh, they're, they're sound as, 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 as on defense as you can possibly be. So they're a, they're a well-rounded football team. Why do you think the run defense is not having a guy? No, it, it ain't, it ain't the people. It ain't the humans. You know, we got to coach better. We got to, we got to hold gaps better. We got to get off blocks better, and we got to tackle better. We got to run to the ball and tackle. Uh, 
it just didn't look good. It didn't look good, and there's no excuse for it. And uh, we 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 got to do a better job, or they will they will expose us. In terms of the wide receiver group, last week, you know, four different receivers caught a touchdown. As and Dalton Carnes and, and uh, Brian Henry both caught their first career touchdowns. Can you talk a little bit about just the, what the rotation is right now in those third and fourth spots and some of the backup spots as well? Uh, yeah, uh, Dalton Carnes has just been he's just been consistent as can be, you know. So you know he's worked himself into the rotation. Man, Jack in the first play of the game got hit on his knee and. He, had, he ended up getting stitches at halftime, and then he didn't play much in the second half. He's fine, and we'll, he's been practicing. He's he's back to full go. But uh, you know, Dalton went in there and, and, and played faster and played better, just because you know, man, Jack who played good in the first half. Uh, he's the starting inside receiver. You know, uh, Dalton's emerging as as another option at inside receiver. You know, Sam and Matt both you know had decent games. Uh, Boogie Johnson um, is 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 back healthy, ready to go. Uh, um, CJ Nelson is back healthy, ready to go. So he'll be back. Um, you know, that gives us some speed on the outside with our backup roles. Uh, those guys are playing well, you know, and Donovan c continues to get better. I was very pleased with our past game, especially in the first half last week. On the receivers, Dana, uh, at what point did Sam sort of, you know, you, you want to build that trust where you target him more. Did you feel like from the beginning, that was that guy? Because I know a lot of people talked about Matthew and him being the guy after Tank, but it seems like Sam has warranted a lot of the, the targets that have come his way. Yeah, uh, I, both of them, right? I mean, you know, this was the Tank Dell show for two years because we didn't have a whole lot else. You know, that's why Matt came here is because he wanted to give Tank some help, you know, so to speak, you know, and um, – but Matt, Matt's a he's a he's a starting wide out, and Sam Brown's a starting wide out, and those guys are going to get plenty of targets. How much the ball finds them, uh, some of it's game planning, uh, but some of it's just feel of the game too. You know, like what the defenses are doing, and who gets the hot hand, and where that quarterback ends up looking, and trusting those people to be in the right spots is kind of who that ball's going to find. You know, so glad we got both of them. Ball needs to find them a lot. Whether it's Tony or Sam, you sort of have the same script this week with guys going against former team. Is yeah. there, I mean, inevitably, it's going to happen. I mean, you get these situations, but do you do the same thing you did with Donovan a little bit? Or yeah, we do. Um, I talk to him more about it, you know, and 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 I watch it. Uh, I watch it more. It's going to keep happening more and more and more with where this transfer thing is, and it's going to keep happening, right? So, you know, it's going to become a little bit more common so to speak but I will talk to those guys and it's no different than me coaching against somebody that I've known for a long time you know I mean you just you, when you get into the game it's just about the game you know and then you let your families and the, and the fan base enjoy it and then afterwards you you know give some high fives and shake some hands and then and then it's a memory the NCAA changed the rules about 25 guys coming in each year is that good for the sport man i mean it's reality it ain't gonna change right so you know it's like i just got done saying it's gonna become more and more common with transfers and what your roster looks like every year it's it's gonna be hard on budgets it's gonna be hard on recruiting it's gonna be hard on 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 maintaining your roster and maintaining your 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 culture um, but it's where we're at, and it's reality, and it's not going away. So get used to having a new roster uh, upwards of 50 to 60 to 70% every year. It's going to happen. You know, I watched that Oklahoma State game they, they, and who beat Kansas State, and I think their number was at 52 or 53 new people from last year. I mean, we're at 42, you know, but it, it's going to become more and more common. I, mean, I, I want to close with this. Just um, – you know, a good friend of mine, uh, my condolences go out to Dale Wolfley's family. Uh, you know, Wolfman was on my staff. He's a, you know, uh, you know, he's a great player there. He was, uh, 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 he was on our staff. You know, we worked there forever. It was very important to a lot of people, uh, to Mountaineer Nation. So my condolences go out uh, to his family. Um, you know, 
he's going to be missed. I coached two of his kids, you know, so it meant a lot to me. I'm sure he was going to be here, you know, but I uh, just wanted to send my condolences to Mountaineer Nation. Thanks, Sam.